actually here subhanallah if you clicked on this video i know that somewhere inside of you you want this ramadan to be special you don't want it to just have come and go and nothing really changed maybe you wasted the last ramadan maybe you never really thought of ramadan as being something important but deep down there's a small voice in the back of our heads that want this ramadan to be different and that's why you're watching this video growing up i never really understood it in fact i actually I actually didn't look forward to Ramadan at all. I kind of dreaded when it would come because I just looked at it as 30 days where I couldn't eat or drink. My energy levels were always low, but I still had to go to school and see everyone else, you know, eat and drink and do whatever. And then I had to go at night with my dad to the masjid and just stand there and pray for an hour. It, it wasn't a fun experience for me until I saw one of my friends in the hallway at school. And I, I remember this so vividly because he came down the hall on the first day of Ramadan and he was practically jumping down the halls. He was so excited. And so I go up to him and I'm like, dude, why, why are you so excited? What happened? He's like, bro, it's the first day of Ramadan. Like, why? Why? How can I not be excited? And I'm like, subhanAllah, that's the exact reason why... I'm in such a bad mood right now. But you know, when we talked about it and I did more research on, you know, the purpose and, and the rewards of Ramadan, naturally I got really excited too. And so now every year, and so through this video, inshallah, I want to get you excited for it as well if you aren't already. The main reason or purpose of Ramadan is to achieve taqwa or God consciousness, right? Allah tells us in the Quran that fasting has been written for you just like it's been written for those before you so that you may achieve taqwa. Because if I'm alone in my room, for example, right? No one will know if I just have a quick drink, right? If I eat something, no one's gonna see me, no one's gonna know and I can just move on with the day and pretend like I'm still fasting. But because I know that Allah is always watching me, whether I'm out in public or I'm alone in my room, I'm not going to eat, I'm not going to drink. And when you do that for 30 days, that sense of piety starts to build up and it applies to other aspects of your life as well, right? You stay away from, from other haram because you know that Allah is always there and he's always watching you. Then naturally from that repeated acts of piety, you start to gain this closeness to Allah. And from that, you develop this sense of peace that is, it's honestly undescribable. Like, you only understand it if you've ever felt that sense of peace and closeness before. And that feeling, that is why we're so excited for Ramadan. Because it's so easy to attain that. One of my favorite quotes is from Abu Hanifa where he says, If the kings and the royals knew of the pleasure that we are in, they would send their armies to fight us with their swords and take it from us. The interesting thing is that these are Bedouin Arabs. Right, this pleasure, this this wealth that he's talking about, it's not monetary. They're not rich. This pleasure that he's talking about is this closeness that you get to Allah, is the peace that comes from that. And subhanAllah, these kings, they have everything that you want from the dunya. But you realize that some of the richest, some of the most successful people in this dunya are actually very miserable they're very depressed because there's just no inner peace that inner peace only comes from the remembrance of allah and so even though they might not be rich in terms of the amount of money they have they are much wealthier than the kings and the nobles of the world because they have that taqwa ramadan is the month where the doors of jannah are open the doors of hellfire are closed and the shaitan is locked up every single night in ramadan every single night is an opportunity for you to be permanently banned from ever entering hellfire. Because every single night, Allah handpicks a group of his servants, a group of his worshipers, and says, hellfire has been made haram upon you permanently. Every single Ramadan from one year to the next is an opportunity for all of your sins to be forgiven. We have that opportunity right now in these 30 days to really just focus on our deen and better ourselves as people. Think of Ramadan as your boot camp, as your training ground for the next 11 months of the year. Let's say you have two people. One of them trains every single day outside for hours, whether it's, whether it's raining, whether the sun's out, whether it's snowing, whether it's windy, he's always out there. He's training no matter what. And then you have someone else who is always in his 
nice cozy little office with his suit on and a cup of coffee in his hands in his room temperature room. If you took both of these people and you put them out in the rain, who is going to fare off better? The person who is always training outside, he isn't going to suffer at all because this is just his normal conditions, right? This is what he's used to do. This. It's not a struggle for him. Think of Ramadan the same way. It is 30 days where we absolutely push ourselves physically, mentally, and spiritually to better ourselves as people to make it easier for us outside of Ramadan. Because you've already been doing so much ibadah in those 30 days. You've been reading Quran every day. You've been praying. You've been going to the masjid. What Allah asks for outside of Ramadan is so much less. So it's easy for you now. Now when that attractive girl walks by on campus, you're gonna be like, nope, I was lowering my gaze for the last 30 days. I can do another day, no problem. Those are just some of the benefits that you're going to get from Ramadan. But this is very important because you are not going to have a successful Ramadan if you don't start preparing for it right now. You can't just keep the same habits and lifestyle that you're doing right now and then just expect on the first day of Ramadan to suddenly just become the super productive, super pious Muslim who's who's always in the Majid 24-7 doing Qiyam fasting is no issue that's just you're daydreaming this is not gonna happen but that's exactly what this video is for we're gonna go over five ways where you can start preparing from now so that you can have the best ramadan that you've ever had inshallah this first one is so important but i low-key feel like it's talked about the least and it's getting rid of your bad habits. We all know about your prayer, your fasting, your increasing in your Quran, all that stuff. But if you have bad habits, if you have sinful habits that you carry in Ramadan, it's going to spoil those deeds that you've done. It's gonna spoil all the khair and, 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 and the reward that you might get from Ramadan. If you're praying, you're fasting, you're doing all this good, but then you're also watching haram or you're cursing or you're just, you're wasting your time, it's not going to be the best Ramadan that you could have had. Umar Sulaiman always says that an ounce of cure is better than a pound of prevention. Taking the precautions beforehand to make sure you don't you don't fall into the sin is a lot better than being in the sin and then trying to find a way out. Unfortunately, a lot of Muslims have this mindset that Ramadan is there to fix me, right? So I can continue my bad habits, I can just live my life normally, and then have a 180 degree turn on the first day of Ramadan and just become a completely different person. Ramadan isn't just supposed to fix you. It's supposed to elevate you. It's supposed to be a spiritual experience that you haven't felt all year. But it's really hard for that to happen if you haven't already put in the effort to clean your heart a bit and, and, to, and to let it be soft enough so that the remembrance of Allah, so that your actions and your prayers and all that can actually have an effect on you. So really get rid of those bad habits. If you have sins or addictions, I know, I know it's a lot easier said than done, but really, really try in these next week, two weeks before Ramadan to, to get rid of them or at least minimize because they're going to stay near Ramadan. I know I already mentioned this, but you know, if you're, if you're praying and you're fasting and you're doing all this stuff, but you're not lowering your gaze or you're cursing, you're loose with your tongue. It, it's it's gonna have a stain on your on your edge. So put in an effort from now to get rid of these sins and make dua for Allah to help you. Those two, that's a deadly combo. Putting in effort and then making dua. Don't sleep on those two right there. Number two is to make sure to get all five of your prayers and then some. I know everyone's journey with salah is different, but Ramadan is really where we wanna push ourselves, right? So if you wanna go above and beyond during Ramadan, you wanna make sure you're at least pushing yourself before then as well. So if you're praying two, three, maybe four of your prayers right now, then make sure to really try and get all five of them down now so that when Ramadan comes, you're able to push it even more. If you're already doing all five of them now, then start doing those sunnah prayers right after salah. Do your shafa and witr at night. And if you really can, if you really want to push it, then do your tahajjud or qiyam layl before fajr. Also make it a point to start praying at least fajr or isha in the masjid, especially if you're a guy. You're already going to be doing this anyways in Ramadan because of tarawih, and then you really should be getting fajr in the masjid during Ramadan. So it'd be good practice to start those from now. Number three is to start reading a bit of Quran every single day. Obviously, one of the most common goals during Ramadan is to do your khatm, right? To, to read the entire Quran. Some people do it once. Once, some people do it two, three, five, ten times. Mashallah. If you're going to school right now or you're working, you're taking care of family, if you already have a busy schedule, it's going to be hard to fit in, you know, an entire reading of a juz or two juz every day during Ramadan. So start right now by doing a little bit. Fit in a page or two of Quran after every prayer. That's a really easy way to kind of gradually get 10 or 20 pages done 
uh, throughout the day. But don't sleep on this tip because reading Quran is one of the most important things you can do in Ramadan and you don't want it to be a shock when it comes. I mean, outside of Ramadan, this is crazy by the way, this is insane. Outside of Ramadan, you get 10 good deeds for every letter that you read. So for me to say, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ I think that's 13 letters. So that's 130 good deeds from saying, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ And then in Ramadan, everything is multiplied even more. So reading Quran in Ramadan is just, it's a hack. It, it really is a life hack. Make your intentions from now on how much Quran you want to read during Ramadan and start getting into the habit of reading it when you wake up or before you go to sleep or after every prayer so that it's easier for when Ramadan actually starts for you to hit those goals. We are zooming through these. Number four is to start fasting Mondays and or Thursdays. Obviously, as we know, uh, you got to fast all 30 days in Ramadan. <laughs> it's kind of an obligation. And so for a lot of us who, you know, don't really fast outside of that, it can be a real struggle when that first week hits of Ramadan to get into that flow. Especially if you're a coffee addict like me and you don't get your morning cup of coffee that's when the headaches come in. That's when the you know the low energy levels and all that good stuff. An easy way to, to help with that and to also gain an immense amount of good deeds at the same time is to start fasting, you know, the Mondays and Thursdays leading up to Ramadan. Obviously, it was the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, to do so. And so not only are you emulating the Sunnah, you're also gonna make it easier for when you have to fast during Ramadan and you are gaining a bunch of good deeds at the same time. And then last but definitely, definitely not least, is to be disciplined disciplined in your sleep schedule. If you want to make the most out of Ramadan, you're going to have to pray Tarawih at night. You're going to have to wake up to pray your Qiyam and to pray your Fajr and all that good stuff. If you're not diligent and disciplined with your sleep schedule in Ramadan, you are going to suffer. You're either going to suffer or you're not going to make the most out of Ramadan. One of the two for sure. I understand the whole vibe after Tarawih, doing post move with the boys and all that good stuff. I'm not saying don't do that. Well, I, I kind of am saying don't do that. <laughs> you need to find a balance, right? You need to find a balance. Ramadan is your month to really focus on your ibadah and, and to get that closeness to Allah. You don't want to be socializing all the time, especially if it's going to impact your sleep schedule. If your schedule allows for it and you're able to take a one to two hour nap during the day, that is also great. But, you know, for most of us who are in school or who work, that usually isn't an option. So we have to rely on being very diligent with our sleep at night. And to be totally honest, especially in the last 10 days of Ramadan, you're probably going to be sleep deprived. And in my opinion, that's okay. It's okay to push yourself and sacrifice a bit of that sleep for a greater reward, especially in the Akhirah. But what I'm mainly talking about is all those useless hours that we spend at two in the morning watching TikToks, watching YouTube videos, even FaceTiming friends. There's more purpose and, and potential in Ramadan than just that. You have to be so, so productive and diligent with every minute that you have in Ramadan. For me personally, I don't go to the gym in these 30 days because as much as I prioritize my body and my health, these 30 days are my chance to be, to have all my sins forgiven, to be, to be saved from hellfire. I'm going to spend as much time as I can reading Quran, praying, helping others. I, I don't got time for the gym. I definitely don't have time to be scrolling on TikTok. You need to approach this Ramadan with that mentality or else you're, you're, you're going to leave things on the table. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa sallam Can I call you back in like five minutes? I'm recording a YouTube video. Then why'd you call me? You called me. I called you. But you could have just waited to call me back. What's the YouTube video about? Uh, YouTube video is about how to prepare for Ramadan. Why you should be excited for Ramadan and how to prepare for it. Alright, flip the camera. Cool. Alright, so there's like five steps that we can... Uh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> That's my job. That's my job. <laughs> Nine minutes. Alright, hey man, I'm, I'm going to call you back in three minutes. Okay, I'll go say <laughs> Anyways. What was I saying? Hey man, subhanAllah. Yeah, man, I forgot what I was saying. Something about being disciplined and, and taking advantage of the opportunity. But on a real note, though, you know, I'm so excited for this Ramadan. It's, inshallah, it's going to be amazing. Make dua. Make dua for yourself, for your family, for your friends. That, that first that we see Ramadan, that we're able to actually witness another Ramadan. 
and that it's just a life-changing experience inshallah i will catch you guys in the next video which will be during ramadan inshallah oh man i'm excited all right i'll catch you guys in the next one so